I'm Thomas Baldrick at ASCO 2015. We are honored to have back with us Dr. Eric von Kutzum. He is here to talk about the phase three recourse trial of TAS-102 versus placebo. It's a phase three study with best supportive care in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. Thank you, sir, for stopping by. It's a pleasure to talk so to you. So what was the objective of this recourse study? Well, the recourse study was a randomized study in patients failing all different treatment, uh, treatment options. So patients with metastatic uh, colorectal cancer who failed fluoropyrimidines, oxaliplatin, and runotecan, and then the targeted agents, bevacizumab, and in the Keras wild type patients, also the anti gvar antibodies. And TAS-102 is a new drug, a new fluoropyrimidine, with, with a different mechanism of action of 5 fu um, it's more incorporated into uh, DNA and therefore it can inhibit tumor growth that was uh, seen as, one, as an important aspect in the mechanism of action. And what we did is a randomized study of uh, placebo plus best supportive care versus TAS-102, which is administered orally, plus best supportive care. And we saw, as the data were published recently in the New England Journal of Medicine, um, we saw an improvement in the overall survival, progression-free survival, um, with relatively low uh, toxicity. Like with any drug, there was some toxicity, but uh, the toxicity was, uh, was minor um, in the situation. And so in a global perspective, it adds up on a new treatment option for patients uh, with metastatic colorectal cancer, um, uh, who failing different uh, lines of therapy. And until today, um, there are still a lot of patients, unfortunately, who, who are failing and who are still in good condition and who want a new treatment option. Of course, the benefit, although being statistically significant and although being clinically relevant for these patients, uh, the benefit remains modest. Um, but that's what we have always seen in colorectal cancer. Um, benefits are there um, uh, and new drugs, when they are introduced, um, it's always a step-by-step -step, um, improvement. Uh, we had done always a couple of months in overall survival. Um, and with this uh, sequence, uh, with the different sequential approaches with the other agents that I mentioned, and then also in the future therapeutic algorithm uh, with TAS-102, we, it will help to, to drive and to improve the, the overall survival. And today, in many uh, cancer trials uh, with, uh, of colorectal cancer patients, we see a median survival of 30 months. That's thanks to not one drug. That's thanks to the integration and the sequential use of different treatment options. Regarding this new oral agent, um, with the significant improvement in overall survival and progression-free survival, when it is available, do you see community physicians moving up and using this in the treatment continuum? Yes, uh, that's what we expect. Um, we expect also that once it's approved that it will go into the guidelines and CCN or in Europe, the ESMO guidelines, because the data are quite straightforward. There's not a lot of discussion on the safety aspects. Um, um, and therefore, uh, in, the, in the continuum of care, in this sequence, um, it, it's expected that it will have a place um, in the chemorefractory patients the, as the trial was done. Let's discuss the hazard ratios for OS and PFS for US, European, and Japanese substates. I understand there are no marked differences among the subgroups with respect to overall incidence of adverse events. How does this compare to current regimens in first, second, and third line treatments? Well, this study is done in later lines of treatment. Um, um, one aspect is, first of all, the differences in regions. Uh, it was important to look into that because the first trial with TAS-102, which was published in the Lancet Oncology uh, some time ago, was in Japanese patients only. And therefore, when we designed this trial, um, we, it was a global trial. 50% of patients come from Europe, then there are some Japanese patients and some American patients. Um, and indeed, it was a lot of questions to see whether there was a difference of hazard ratio in the different subgroups um, in the different regions. And the good thing is that um, there was a, a similar benefit in U American patients European patients and, and Japanese Asian patients. Uh, the hazard ratio um, is nice. It com 
compares to what we see, the median survival benefit uh, compares also very similar to what we have seen to regorafenib in a similar setting uh, in last lines in chemorefractory patients. Um, and and that, that's what we expected. So we often see in many of these different trials hazard ratios between 0.65 and 0.75 for survival. Um, um, and that's also uh, the findings here in these uh, subpopulations. Since overall recourse population OS and PFS benefits were observed in each geographic subgroup, what do you believe are the clinical implications of this data and, and the study? Well, the clinical implications are that we have a new drug, that the, the trial shows uh, that uh, TAS-102 is active with minimal uh, toxicity um, and therefore uh, once available, once approved, um, it will be in the armamentarium in our treatment uh, options for patients in later lines and, uh, and the clinical implications for practicing oncologists will be that there is an extra option, a new option available for patients uh, um, in chemorefractory patients of course. And you're optimistic it will become available in, the, in European patients and Americans? We are optimistic that it will become available, that the data are straightforward. Um, a good sign was already that recently the New England Journal of Medicine published the data. Um, there's not a lot of discussion on, um, on let's say, toxicity. Um, uh, we don't have subgroups. Um, it's a classic cytotoxic, so there, is, there are no molecular markers. Uh, to look into that, that's all, sometimes what authorities want, uh, like European authorities often uh, stress, uh, can you determine a subgroup, a predictive marker, uh, but it's a classic cytotoxic, so we, we don't have a, a biomarker and it's unlikely that we will have ever a biomarker for this drug in these uh, patients. Well, congratulations on your efforts to this point. We wish you the best of luck in helping these patients. Thank you very much. Okay.